Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about strings in the C programming language, and this will be part one here. Let's go ahead and open up your web browser to my website, thegpu.com, and select Menu and C Tutorials. Scroll down here to Strings Part 1. So this tutorial will build on concepts from my char data type tutorial. Strings in C are a bunch of char values chained together. In other words, an array of chars. Now in my previous char data type tutorial, I displayed dog to the console by printing three char values. Now in memory, a string, in other words, a character array, uh, that contains the word dog would look like this. The first, bu first byte D, second byte O, third byte G, right? Decimal, representing 68 in the ASCII table here. Pop back over to that and scroll up to D. 68, here's the binary on what the actual individual bits would be. And 111, of course, in the ASCII table, and I'll just take, take the time to run down to that there. And 111 is O, right? And G, of course, which is 103 on the ASCII table here. All right. Uh, now everything may everything above may look just fine, but C is not that smart when it comes to strings. Now, throughout my C tutorials so far, I've mentioned the importance of understanding memory management, and strings require a little extra helping hand. So let's talk about the null zero, which is this right here. The null zero is often referred to by other terms such as binary zero or string terminator. It looks just like an escape sequence, and it essentially is. Now, when it comes to strings, the null zero flags C that the end of a string has occurred. Now, to be accurate in memory, a string that contains the word dog would look like this. D-O-G, and then the fourth byte will contain the null zero, which is a decimal zero, which is a bunch of binary zeros there for that byte value. Okay. Now, let's talk about numbering char array elements. Now, an example above, uh, the string dog, followed by null zero, which is a char array, contains four elements, and it will consume four bytes of memory. Now, each position is referred to as an element and is numbered starting with zero, not with one. That's important to understand. And once you understand that concept, you pretty much get it for the rest of the arrays in C. So the first element of an array is in the zero position. The second is in the first position. The third is in the second position, and the fourth is in the third position. So coming down here, I put a little zero down there. So the D and dog is in the zero, zero uh, position, but this is the first element of the array. Second element of the array has O, but it's, it's index one, then index two, and index three. So as you can see, there is in fact four elements here, and they start off the numbering with zero, and the fourth element contains the null zero. Now let's we'll talk a little bit about declaring and initializing strings. It is important to understand that when declaring strings, which are char arrays, right, you must allocate enough memory bytes for the largest value that you anticipate the string could possibly contain. Now two examples of declaring and initializing strings are as follows. So here we could uh, um, declare this, this char array, dog1, right, char data type, and set that equal to dog. And notice the double quotes here. This is a string literal. Um, and you'll notice inside the parentheses, there's, there's no number there. The second way here is we could do char dog four equals, and then a string little dog. So in the first statement, you'll notice that there is no number inside of the square brackets. That is because C just has just enough smarts to determine on its own that four elements need to be allocated. Now also note that I did not include the null zero character in the string literal when assigning the variable a value. Now in the second statement, you can see that I allocated four elements to the char array accounting for the null zero, right? I did the math for it this time. Okay, now instead of initializing a declared variable, uh, let's just simply declare it, right? So if we do something like this, char dog, um, and it's going to have four elements in it, can we do something like this later on to assign a variable a value, right? And say, for example, so we've already declared it up here. Can we initialize it and assign, basically assign it the string little dog later here on here? And the answer is no. We have to use special functions from the string.h header file to manipulate strings after they are declared. And I will go over those in part two. Now, one thing that we can do is change each individual element of the dog variable, right? 
um, above like this. So we can say dog element zero equals, and then of course we're, this is a, a, a char literal, character literal there, because it's got the single quotes around it. And assign zero, one, two, three, C, A, T, and then a null zero. So let's go ahead and explore some code here. I'm going to move this off screen. And I've got a shortcut to the command prompt right down here on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting New Shortcut, CMD, Next, Finish. It's still just that easy. When you first open this up, type in GCC. You should see uh, fatal error, no input files, compilation terminated. However, if you see something like uh, command contains unrecognized free w keyword or something like that, uh, watch my tutorial on installing GCC. You'll need to make sure you got that good to go before you move on. So CD space backslash moves us to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called CDemo. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it would create it for you. And for this, um, this one, I'm going to make a directory here. I'm going to call this uh, strings1, right? Let's go ahead and change directories to the strings1 folder. And, you know, I'm just going to use Notepad this time around. Um, let's go ahead and Notepad strings1.c will be the name of the source code file. <laughs> All right, let's bring back over the web browser here. Let's come down here and highlight all this stuff here. Copy and then we'll just come over here and paste. You don't want to watch me type all that in, that's for sure. Oh, we ended up with some funky alignment there. Uh, I'm gonna just do a shift. Oh, wait now. All right, well, you know what? I'll just tab out this and tab out that and make it a little bit larger there. Turn zero. All right, everything aligns up. I'll have to Take a look and see what I screwed up in the copy-paste there, but no big deal. All right, so right up here at the top, including the standard io.h, um, I had a print bits function I've used a lot in my previous tutorials. I modified it to print bytes because I'm going to show you some cool stuff here and here. And here's our main method entry point here. Um, let's go ahead and save this, compile it, and then we'll step through some code here. So let's clear our screen. GCC, hit s and tab and then our output file we'll just call it the same of course minus a c okay, so there we go um, there's our exe uh, let's go ahead and clear our screen again and let's execute this all right so i'm going to move this over here and kind of move this back over here all right so um this string right here uh, is dog one and you could see that I initialized it to dog and I did not specify the number of um, characters in that there, right? And coming right down here to this printf statement for dog one, right? Uh, just displaying it to the console dog one equals dog. And then um, right down here, dog one, the number of bytes that it contains. Um, and then it prints bytes, the size of dog one and the values of dog one. And so you could see there's the D, the O, the G and then all zero, right? Uh, second declaration and in initialization here, dog two, I put in four, set that equal to dog, right? And as you can see, we got the, essentially the same thing here for the print F, right? And the print bytes up here too as well for dog two. Okay, now dog three, take a look at that. I just did a declaration on it, right? And as you can see, it's just got a bunch of zeros in here, right? Uh, there's actually no values held in here. Um, one thing I could tell you is, is you want to be careful because sometimes there could be garbage left over here that was in taking up memory space from some previous program. So you won't always get lucky like this where it'll come up with a whole bunch of, essentially these are null zeros, right? And so when we display dog three to the console there, it comes up with nothing, right? even though our size of the dog three, right, is actually four bytes, right? And these are what it all contains right here, okay? Now, um, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna go in and set each of the individual elements, right? The first, the second, the third, and the fourth elements, all numbered starting up zero, to CAT, and then including our null zero right here. Okay, and then I'm just going to display dog three here and then display the dogs and the size of it. So dog three equals cat. And there is our binary representation followed by the null zero on that. All right, here's one of the things that I did want to talk about there. Because dog three, we declared it up here, but we didn't initialize it at the same time. We can't do this right here. So if we come out here and we save this, 
um, and we try to hit the up arrow until we get to there and we try to compile this right. It says assignment to expression with array type. So we come up with an error right here, which is a compiler error. So, uh, so that, that is one of the things that we definitely cannot do here in C. So, all right. Um, I think that'll about conclude it for the tutorial. Of course, I will be going on over in the next tutorial how we can manipulate strings after they are, uh, you know, either declared or initialized, you know, obviously without having to do it each individual element one at a time there. So. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So uh, basically, you should now have a basic understanding of how strings, which are char arrays, in fact, work in C. So stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will show you how to manipulate strings. Thanks for watching.